Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's miniature, sort of tabletop radiogram time uh, in this episode. Uh, and this is uh, has been sent to us by a customer who wants it completely restored electronically and uh, the cabinet because it is in a terrible condition. Um, bearing in mind, this is... I just had to look at the radio museum because I, I, I was guessing at the date, late 20s, early 30s, and it is uh, very early 30s, 1930, 1931, that sort of time. So she's uh, she's a good 90 odd years old. It's this part, this sort of the, the flockings, this sort of soft. Oops, um, the hinge is broken as well. The, the latch is broken as well. Now this bit's in, in reasonably good order, so the inside's not too bad. But the, the top of the cabinet has suffered really badly, as you can see. The speaker grill is gone. There's voids in the side, um, and it would appear that this one, that this actual gram, there's a photograph on the radio museum website. And it would appear to be this exact one because you can see that the tears in the speaker cloth are, are in the same positions. So uh, game plan for this one is I'm going to strip everything out of the cabinet, which I won't bore you with. I'm just going to take everything out of the cabinet. And then uh, this is beyond what we normally do here. I've got a, a, a company that we send off. Uh, we sort of do minor restorations to cabinets. Uh, this is having a full restrip. Um, all this old brown is going to come off. They'll refinish it in French polish. It should look a million dollars when it's finished. So what I'm going to do now is finish my coffee, and then I'm going to start degutting it, basically. Deck out, amplifier out, I've got some radio chassis out, uh, take everything out, loudspeaker, so I can just take a blank empty box down to the cabinet restorers. I've taken the lid off the gram. Um, it was, so I only held on my two screws and the actual sort of latchy bit to hold it up was broken anyway. Um, but you can see inside of it, it's a proper, really early... Uh, it's TRF, it's not super hip. So you've got three stage tuner there and the beautiful old celluloid dial. It's actually still in pretty good condition, actually. Um, but this is the sort of thing um, you're going to be looking at in a 19, very early 1930s uh, table radiogram. Uh, this is a beautiful motor that you've got there, uh, HMV motor. You can see sort of uh, it's got a, a governor which is sort of harks back to the. Um, the, gra the wind up gramophone days, it's, it's, it's sort of like, almost like a re cobbled one of those. They're, you can guarantee that was repurposed from uh, their wind up days. Um, so, what I'm going to do is say, just strip all this off, get this chassis out, and the box can go off to the restorers. <laughs> Well, the cabinet's gone off to the restorers, um, so they're going to take care of that part for me. Uh, what we're going to do now is get the chassis actually on the bench um, and, and have a proper look and see where we are with it. So let's have a look at the chassis uh, now it's on the bench. And we can see it's uh, it's quite ancient. It's, <laughs> it's, it's rusty in places. Um, one thing to point out is this, this um, part of the chassis and this transformer and all the other main parts, apart from the tuner condenser uh, here, this is cadmium plated, so that's why it's in pretty good order. Uh, it was used as a rust inhibitor, corrosion prevention, and it's worked really well. Uh, this isn't particularly dusty. I've seen some that, that you could literally wipe your fingers and, and cadmium will come off, and it's not very good if you get in your pipes or in your tummy, so just be mindful if you're working on these sort of sets not to start brushing the cadmium around too much. It's really loose. Uh, come up with a plan to uh, to wipe it away and, and dispose of it accordingly. But to get on the main bit, so what we've got is this, it's a TRF set with regeneration, which makes it stick some of the signal back through and amplifies it again, uh, basically. Three gang tuner with three coils, one per coil, basically. It's just used to amplify the signal as it goes through. Quite a simple set. Um, we'll just spin it up underneath. And you'll see there's not a tremendous amount uh, component-wise uh, that's visible. Lots of wiring, and we've got lots of uh, the, the, the horrible, crunchy rubber wire. I'll see if I can get right in on that, actually, so you can see that on that one. And you can see how crispy these wires go, and yeah, this is going to get used as a regular thing. Um, and again, if I zoom up here, you can see all this wire, and you've only got to move it a little bit, and, and, and you can start seeing it, it cracks even more. Um, and some of the, the there's black here that's going up to sort of heaters for the sorry the, that's the heater one it's going up to dial bulb uh, that's really crispy so anyway that's coming out another nice thing to look at here these really early 
um, resistors, almost look a little bit like fuses, uh, sort of wire encapsulated inside a glass tube with these sort of metal end caps. Um, you can see that one there, you know, 100k, 0.1 meg. Um, so that's a quite an unusual thing to see. Um, with a couple of condensers on the end of capacitors, or whatever you want to call them, on the end. But the main thing about these sets is this beastie under here, where normally you would see dozens of uh, capacitors, condensers dangling from wires. Uh, this set doesn't have those. They're all inside a condenser block. This great big lump on the top here, which is, you know, there's my hands. It's a, it's a big beast. This is full of uh, the 99.9% .9 of the capacitors that are used inside the receiver. Um, it didn't last long. They soon realized that actually this is a bit of a pain because it comes to servicing. Uh, you can't just deal with the, the, the component that's a problem. So I, I really said, sort of, come to the mid-30s, you don't really see HMB using that idea anymore. And they went to individual capacitors. So what we're going to do, what we're going to have to do is... Uh, open, take all these wires off here, mark these up so we know where they go, but take this um, can out and we'll be rebuilding the capacitors inside there. It's it's going to be filled with pitch, uh, which will warm up and, and we'll pour those, those capacitors out. This is going to be the most sort of time consuming part of this set. Um, so what I'm going to do now is crack on with that. Hopefully you can see that now I've uh, looked a bit of a mess, but these are all labelled up. Um, that correspond with the numbers on the actual condenser block. This makes life a little bit easier rather than having to going back through the schematics. I mean, if one of these comes off, well, we'll have to scratch our heads and look at the schematic to work out where it goes later. Um, but for now, these are all marked up. Uh, next, what we're going to do is say a disconnect that condenser block from the top. That was easy. Oh, coming up fairly easily, to be fair. Hmm. I was expecting them to be really tricky to get out. Um, in actual fact, that yeah, there's, there's the advantage with cadmium plated chassis. I think it's, it, 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 it does work very well. Oops, I want to lose those. Let's get a little pop for them. It does work really well as a as a um, rust inhibitor. And you can see it's very clean. A bit, a little bit yellowy with the cadmium, uh, quite a clean chassis. I have slathered myself in barrier cream. I use quite a bit of barrier cream um, just to try and prevent too much stuff getting in my hands. Um, I use stuff my grandfather's been using. It's, it's the old uh, Roslex dry guard. I'm not endorsing it. It's just something I've used for years. Uh, my great grandfather used it. My grandfather used it, and I use it. Uh, it just makes getting the crud off your fingers. I can't work in gloves. I don't know how people, I watch Shango and I don't know how he manages to get uh, screws in and out wearing those gloves. I really do struggle. Um, so anyway, no gloves for me, plenty of barrier cream. That's three screws out this side. I'm going to take the screws out from the other side. There's three more this side. And then we'll come back and have a look at the condenser block. Screws are out. Uh, not much of a reveal, really. Um, you can see how lovely and bright and shiny the chassis was before the cadmiums clipped all the dust over the years. Here's the block. It's actually painted um, white in this one, which is quite unusual. I've never seen one. There was some darker colours than that. But anyway, this one's painted white, and you can clearly see the little plate on the bottom there. Um, they're normally soldered up, or just this one looks like it might have been clipped together. So I'm going to, to just snip all those wires off. Let me just put this down a minute. So we're doing a bit better. Right, start that one again, Robert. Yeah, this one here. You can see how we've got all these numbers on the back here. They correspond to you know various capacitors that are fitted inside um, that are, are, will be shown on the on the service data. Four little rivets here. We'll drill those out and then we'll lift this off. Actually, we might not need to lift those out. We might just be able to snip these wires actually, because you can see uh, the wires for the various capacitors uh, go through the top. Actually, yeah, I'm going to be able to nibble those off so they can then hopefully it'll just be able to pull out with this still attached, uh, and then you'll see inside the, the great big lump of pitch not quite got it open yet because as this one has as i thought some uh are normal as you can see along here there is a, a, a very thin bead of solder that's been added to seal this all up um so what i'm going to use is the hot air gun just to go along here and soften that um solder to enable me just to pop the lid off 
Okay, you probably see it's smoking away. It's fairly hot. I have got gloves on now because the the can is roasting hot. Um, well, there we are. Carefully take that away from there. There's the lid. So I was lucky enough. You can see the black pitch has warmed up where I've... Well, that's even hot with gloves on. Um, let me just get rid of that for a second. That's very hot. And there we have just a solid lump of tar uh, pitch, which was you know, one of the only waterproof insulators we had at the time, you know, shellac and those sort of stuff, but you sort of pot capacitors and that were, were always potted in pitch. You can just make out the leads from the, all the old capacitors. You can see where some over the years have got hot and started to leak their waxy goodness all out of the pitch. Um, but they started to give up the unequal struggle. This is now going to go in the oven uh, just to slowly warm it, not very, not on a very high uh, temperature, just on a really low light, just to keep it nice, just to warm it up. And hopefully what I'll be able to do is just turn this upside down, give it a shake, and this whole blob will come out. And what we'll do, we'll repack it with uh, new capacitors, um, and then we'll put the lid back on, and it can stay sealed up for another 90 years. While the can is cooking merrily in the oven uh, to warm that pitch up, I thought I'd dig up. I'm very lucky to have masses of original service data for HMV and Marconi stuff. Um, so I had to dig through, and here we are. So this is the, the actual original service data from 1931 um, to the trade only September 31. And it's Model 42, which is basically this is the that's that chassis, basically. Um, and then they used this motor so we've got the manual for even with the you don't get anything like that anymore once the things have been changed they've been this sort of separate little piece on the front to sort of any any modifications that were made or um changes yeah so we can see that it's, it's a relatively simple circuit put your tune circuits here an intervalve transform which we're going to double check next if not we're going to have to look into doing something with that various windings on here but the actual chassis in here is the block that is now cooking. And you can see uh, those numbers. Actually, in fact, they've got the top bit here. And the side there correspond all the way upside down to those. So I can now clearly see where the various capacitors uh, need to be uh, when we come to refit that can. We can see that there's, you know, some go to earth. Um, Majority, to be fair, go to earth. No, this one doesn't. Uh, this one doesn't. But most of them go to earth. And we can then rebuild that um, by use of this. Some of their service data is really useful. Um, somewhere in here, we've got the list of what all those bit, bits and parts are. So when I when I see C16, um, what it is, we can see here. You see um, that C16 is a fixed condenser inside the in one block. So C16 is a 0.4 microfarad um, capacitor. All these other ones here, you can see marked in one block. These are all the ones we're going to change. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, a couple of 0.4s and a 0.5. Um, so that's what we're going to do. But next thing I'm going to do is say, so you've got to go and check that interval transformer, because if not, I have got some spares we could put in there, but they, they do from time to time cause problems because the wires are so very thin. So let's go and check that and I'll report back. So here's that interval transformer. Um, I've got one wire connected there, the other one here. This should read around about, this is the three to four tap marks on the three, which we recorded the service date should be around about 10K, or yeah, 11.2. So that's perfectly good enough. So we know that side is okay. The chance of the higher impedance side is okay, the low one will be all right. Let's have a look at this side. Fingers crossed, it should be about a thousand. No, bang on 1.03 K. So perfect. We know that the interval transformer is okay. I've already checked the uh, output transformer, that's good. And um, just got to go and have a look at these. Uh, these are the beautiful tuning capacitor, sorry, tuning coils. And these 
aluminium cans. These will go for a wash anyway, so I'm going to take these off. Mess that one off. The last one. Oh. Unscrew that. There's some tape on there, but it doesn't mean anything has been peeled off. So what I'm going to do now is just have a quick check of these coils uh, to make sure they're okay. There's a little bit of some sort of mark on here. So what you don't want is just some sort of problem with the insulation that starts to break down. But I'll double check those. Um, so the, the can's still cooking in the oven, so it gives me a while to double check a few other things. Same thing, tested those with the multimeter, and they're all as they should be, or there or thereabouts. Um, we've got a few, they say crunchy wire scenarios going on here, so these will get replaced. So the cans themselves are going to head off to the, the, the um, parts washer, and the safe washer below, give those a clean. Oh, sorry, banging the microphone around. Um, I've also double checked uh, some of those resistors that were up here. Um, we've got two uh, that are completely open circuit, the rest are well within their 10% tolerance. Um, and from the point of view of originality, I think we're going to leave those in. If they're working after 90 years, the chance I'll be working for another 90. Um, but there's, there's a couple at this end that have gone completely open circuit. So they'll get replaced. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, get these cans in the wash, and then we'll start replacing some of those resistors. I'm not going to bore you. So there's dozens of people, we have videos watching people change resistors. Come back when it's all done. I've removed the condenser block from the oven um, and it's still fairly warm. You can see there's other old stuff in the bottom that we've melted over the years. So you can see now that the pitch is soft, it's pretty warm. So I'm going to make sure I wear the gloves. Obviously I can't do this one handed. I'm going to have to put the phone down. But what I'm going to do is you can see if I lift this, this is all starting to pull out. So what I'm going to do is turn it upside down and dig all that out. And then we'll come back and hopefully the, the can will be fairly empty. Yep, so there it is, all out. Um, this is the great big, ugh, I've got, I haven't got any gloves on now, um, mess of pitch and everything in there. Uh, but that's all going to go for the bin. And there's the empty can. Um, the fact that it's got a pitch line doesn't really matter. We'll fit the new co condensers inside there, pack them all out, and then reseal that tin back up. Um, and then we can rewire them to the tag strip here in um you know, taking note of what was in the service data so we know what to connect to where so next thing i'm going to do load this can full of uh, the new capacitors and uh, we'll come back when it's all fitted together So after a lot of soldering and fiddling and refitting, we've got the new capacitors fitted. Uh, I put a like, bus bar through there. Um, for the, for most of these just go down to ground, down to earth, um, and come from the front. So they're all soldered on there. So what I'm going to do now is just to get this back. And as I say, it seems almost superfluous, this great big box, but it, uh, that's going to go over there like that. And uh, that can stay there because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not going to make any difference to what we're doing here now. That's rock hard. Um, yeah, that's the inside's certainly never going to rust. Okay, I'll get it back in and uh, we can get it back in the set. So there's the condenser can all sealed back up again, just puffed over with a little bit of paint. Um, so it looks lovely. But unfortunately, I am going to have to undo it again, thanks to Marconi service data. Um, I even pointed this out initially to you guys when I was looking at it. Um, I went along and looked at the condenser values in here where it says in one block you can see 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.5 0 0.4s 0.4s and on the front which i should have looked at it says please note it clearly states that those capacitors that read 0.4 should be four microfarads and the c9 10 12 and 14 that read in the service data 0.1 microfarad should be one microfarad not 0.1 so as much as it pains me to do it, I mean, I followed it verbatim from the <laughs> from the service data, but I should have just double checked these red big red warnings on the front. So sadly, I'm going to have to open this back up again and just do a little bit of modification. Uh, a few of the capacitors will have to get changed, um, but I'm not going to show you doing it. I'll show you what we've done before. I'll open up, pop the new ones in, and then we'll crack on with the rest of the set. The condenser blocks all put back together after they uh, 
messing around with those uh, capacitors. Um, next I'm going to tackle is these two uh, open circuit uh, resistors. I'm trying to get a nice close up view of these. These sort of look almost like fuses, but you can see they're clearly marked on the side of the, uh, of the glass with the, with the values of the resistors. Um, and these two are open circuit. The rest in here are all well within tolerance. So um, I'm just going to replace these two up on this top board. And then we're going to have to start concentrating on getting some of this horrible crispy wiring out of the way. I just want to have a quick look at one of these very early sort of uh, resistors used in this set. As you can see, it's sort of pinched off there. I'm trying to keep it in focus. It's good. I've got it zoomed quite up. Um, clearly, you see it's, it's the, say 0.1 meg, 100k ohm. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, it's completely knackered. It's open circuit. So I think what I'm going to do is crack it so we can have a quick look inside. Alrighty, so we've um, cracked it open, and you can see, I've got to try and zoom up really close as I can. It's actually a glass rod inside, with carbon that's just been painted onto the rod. Um, you can see, because you can see here, this side's almost clear. This is just carbon painted onto a rod of glass, and then encapsulated, to zoom in just because it's, I would imagine it's quite easy to rub the... Um, yeah, as you can see there, with a little bit of a rub in my finger, the carbon has come come away from the from the glass rod. So just encapsulated in glass to stop it from being rubbed off. Um, some of the earlier resistors built by sort of homemade, oh, sorry, start again. Some of the resistors made by sort of early experimenters making radios at home were literally just soft pencil lines scribbled on cardboard uh, with wires pushed into the ends of them. So this is sort of a, a, an upgrade from that, but it literally is just carbon. As you say, you can see just stuck to that glass rod um, and then through the end, very much like a fuse, sealed up. Um, but yeah, been in the 90 odd years, so 90 years, <laughs> 93 years, unbelievably. Um, anyway, it's just done. We thought we'd just have a quick look at that. It was, as I say, don't panic. It wasn't a good one. It was open circuit, so something's happened somewhere along the line. Um, but yeah, quite nice to have a look inside. Just want to carry on with a bit more... Um, so I've done the resistors, and I'm going to start replacing some of the crispy wiring in here. Um, but I've also noticed that this uh, electrolytic capacitor here is uh, not original. Um, it's been replaced donkey years ago, because this is a really old uh, replacement. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit... I've got loads of old um, can types, you know, this sort of thing. Uh, it just looks a little bit better when it comes to putting it back together. Um, so what I'm going to do is... You can, so I've got this in the... Pipe cutter, I'm just going to cut that open, take the old guts out and stuff the new capacitors inside. Then again, I'm not going to show you, there's a million and one videos on YouTube of people stuffing condensers in tins. Uh, as you can see, there's a line around there now, I've just made a line. I'm going to cut it open, uh, restuff it, and then I shall put that can then live in there. So the can's all done, um, and it's a little shorter than it would have been originally. It's going to fit in there just like that. Um, and it's, it would have been a bit of a taller one originally. The customer's not, you know, I don't think he's particularly looking for a 100%, a, a you know, look at original restoration. We know that. It wants to be clean. I mean, the, the, the main advantage of sort of fitting these here, one, it doesn't look a bit odd when you look through the top. And secondly, it's just a convenient point to mount the new capacitors. So they're all held inside. Um, so I'm just going to screw that back down. And then um, I am going to get on with all this horrible, crunchy, crunchy wire in here that you can see this So. That's got we want to tackle after we've got that capacitor fitted. Now I'm going to tackle the crispy wiring. Uh, there's plenty of it, as you can see in here. There's, you know, obviously this is where the, the capacitor block was. It's got to fit all these. These are obviously going to get replaced as we go along. I mean, things like this here, you can see, and I've just been moving it around uh, as I replace that the electrolytic up here. And you can see this is all just, you know, you've got to touch it and it crumbles. It's gone. Um, so you know, this one's carrying sort of 300 odd volts. So it's going to get replaced with modern neoprene wire, rubber wire. Uh, I use that because, one, it isn't quite as vivid and bright as uh, PVC wire can be. And secondly, I mean, some of these joints, you have to get reasonably warm. They're quite big lumps of metal to solder to. Um, so we need to make sure that there's, you know, that the wire that I'm going to use isn't going to melt. Uh, and it makes it a lot simpler when you're going in with a big soldering iron. Uh, one, for accidentally touching something, you don't want to then touch the side of something with an iron and melt it. But, but mainly, so when, you, when you're doing joints like here, uh, you can actually get a decent amount of heat so they don't, um, so they don't cause issues. Uh, 
Right, so I'm going to put you on time lapse for a couple of seconds um, while I sit around and, and sort of deal with all this crunchy wiring. Every single wire, apart from the ones from the transformer, underneath the uh, underneath side of the chassis um, will be replaced. I've, uh, the more and more I look, every single wire is just crumbling away. Uh, but I sort of thought show you, we sort of make up these looms, if you like. This is the the heaters um, going through for the valves, um, and this is made with solid wire, so it can sort of hold its form. So I'll go through, and uh, obviously you don't want the heater wind and shorten out because uh, next thing you know you've got a barbecue transformer so this is all going to get replaced and um, with this nice then say then again this is uh, neoprene rubber sleeving sort of proper silicone rubber we want to call it. it's really flexible uh, sleeving over these solid conductors sort of pre-shaped this end is going to now get shaped up to go to the, the, the valve um, the output valve and this is going up to the, the front end up here uh, it's not going to be as long as that it's going to be about here and they're going to just form something very similar like this ready to connect to the sockets on the actual uh, base of the chassis itself right so i'll get this one in <laughs> we're still going with the crispy wiring oh god it's just it's one of those jobs where you look at something and you think that's uh and then it all crumbles um so we're slowly getting there in there uh, the other problem i've noticed obviously i start to look at the if uh sorry not if they're the tuning coils um the coils are fine but they also have um, rubber wire going up inside them so i've had to replace a load of that and also some of it is screened um and it's funny you can see down here I'll just zoom in on that for you that bit there will be sort of crunchy and crumbly it is screened as you can see it diving off up in the, into the bottom of the transformer um so i want to use some reasonably thick sort of rubber wire again to sort of take this back up here so what i do i've done it in the past fairly successfully um this is the center out of a piece of coax aerial lead so as you can see that's the old aerial i can't nothing focusing today so that's just normal coax lead with the, with the sheathing cut off and what i do i'll just take the outer braiding off because it's beautiful copper braiding and then feed the new rubber wiring up the center um i could use ptfe I've got some PTFE wire, but it's really small, and this just makes it a little bit easier to, 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 to get in and out. And it looks a bit more original as well. So I'm just going to quickly do that, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So just quickly, nice and simply, you can see now that the rubber wire, the the, uh, the silicon wire, is now up inside the, the braiding, which was on the coax. Just sort of seal these ends off a little bit of heat, heat shrink. Uh, and then they can go in the set and replace the horrible old crunchy screened wiring that i'm now coming across that started to give up so it's a never-ending story this crunchy wiring so after several hours we've um, finally rewired all the crunchy rubber wiring that is sort of integral to the radio part obviously there's still bits like here that go off to the deck um the record player which i'm going to deal with later because i don't know how long they need to be for now everything else is done it looks a bit of a rat's nest it was a rat's nest originally um there's little i can do with some of these it's just the way they lay um, but what i'm going to do is go around and sort of dress these up a bit and tidy them a little bit better than they are uh, things like this need to be you know dressed together so they stay there um so what i'm going to do i'm just going to quickly show you the what we've taken out uh, i'll chuck it all in a big heap so you can see what we've been doing um and then i will probably call it a day on uh, and do this like a part one because i realize this video is becoming quite a long one so uh, i'll just show you what the state of the bench is how we've taken everything out this is what we've got left over I mean, most of the stuff has just crumbled away um obviously there's the great big lump of capacitors that was inside that block um that's dealt with those uh, a couple of valves here i haven't I haven't tested that one this one's definitely um gone bad and gone away that one a few condensers here that were this one's been added later on um obviously to replace some of the ones that were in here originally but hours and hours of replacing all this super crispy wire obviously these are the new ones not these ones get rid of those but this stuff is so crunchy you can see the bench is just smothered in tiny little bits of broken rubber wire 
Uh, didn't really expect it to be quite as bad as it was, but um, well, you can see here that this is some of the stuff that was inside the um, tuning cans, coils. And this stuff is as soon as you move it, it just breaks away. And then as soon as I move this to do any work, it started to break down inside, so of course, so that does short straight to ground. So that all had to come out as well. So as I said a little while ago, this is going to be it for this video. Uh, I'm going to call this part one of the HMV 501 gram restoration. Uh, what I'll concentrate on next time is we need to get some valves into the actual chassis, uh, test the radio part and the amplifier itself, and then we'll concentrate on the deck. The motor on the deck has got the same crunchy wire, and I think there's this, so we're going to have to go in there and replace all of the wiring on the motor. And I dare say the stuff that goes up to the uh, pickup itself um, is wired in something very similar to this which is probably going to have gone bad as well okay so i shall see you on the next one don't know what it'll be i'll do it as quickly as i can and get it up uh, over the next week or so so you can see what we do with the rest of the hmv 501